Hey everybody, John here. Welcome to the course, How to Use a Synthesizer. This is gonna be part three and we're gonna be talking about wave shapes and the harmonics. So as always, let's do our due diligence and a knit preset, even though it already is, but just to make sure. We're gonna click on default, we're gonna click on uh, analog and basic shapes, and we're gonna come up to the sine wave here. And let's go to this little pencil and bring up this window. So what this is showing us is here is this depiction of our sine wave. And here at the top, there's going to be two rows. The first here at the top is going to be the harmonic of the sound you're making. This first one is the fundamental. And then you're also going to notice that there's some dark gray in here and then there's some light gray. The difference is, is that these light grays correspond to different octaves of this sine wave that we're, that we're creating. And something to keep in mind is that every one of these columns will create a sine wave. And all the sounds that we hear at its very core can be broken up into multiple sound waves at different phases. So a square wave, a triangle wave, a pulse, whatever you want to call it, is basically a lot of sine waves at different, uh, at different phases. And we're going to show you how we come to that conclusion. So this is very basic. This is just a sine wave. And here, this bar, the higher it gets, the louder it's going to be. So if we turn it down, we can see the sine wave getting smaller and lower in volume. The higher we bring it up, the louder that sine wave is gonna be. This down here is going to be the phase as we just uh, demonstrated in the last video, how we can move the sine wave around. So that's kind of the basic thing to realize. Fit, this is gonna be the phase and this is gonna be the, the pitch or the, the harmonics or the octaves, however you wanna visualize it. So if we press a key, let's go right here. If we press a key, and then we basically, so what are we on right, right here? And we'll bring this down and then we'll just put this one up. Press the same key and it's gonna sound like the next octave. So remember this pitch. And we'll click here. It's the same note because these are the octaves of said note. So when we build different types of waveforms, we're gonna build it with these different harmonics. And not all synthesizers have this editor, but this is a good demonstration to understand what we're actually hearing. So they, they generally say the organ was the first synthesizer in a weird way. And it kind of makes sense because if we hear something like this, it almost sounds like an organ. Right? I'm sure we've all heard that before. So if we, let's remove all these here. What's basically happening is you're just adding different octaves. That's all you're really doing. And then through here, you can change the different phases and kind of customize it as you want to. And that's how you can sometimes build your shapes if you want to in the harmonic editor. And a sine wave is literally just one of these things entirely. That's entirely what makes up a sine wave. You just turn up the volume however much you want, play with the phase if you'd like, and that's really all it is to it. Now over here, let's go to the triangle wave. So a triangle wave, as you see, is going to be every odd harmonic. So we have one, we have three, we have five, we have seven, and so on and so forth. And generally for this specific type of triangle, it's right at the same phase for every single one of these harmonics. And we play a note, and that's a triangle wave. Now, if we look at a square wave, it's every harmonic, and you can kind of see how it slowly dips in volume, and all the phase is the exact same. And for the different types of, of, of waveforms, we can look at them like, here's, here's what the square wave looks like. Very similar to a triangle wave, right? And if we go back to the triangle wave, it's very, very, very similar. The only difference here, it looks like, is that the amplitude for all these partials or harmonics is a little bit louder. And then we also have a slight bit of every even harmonic too. And then the phase is different for each one as well. So every time you get like a waveform, you can, there's some sense like this one, for example, if you draw a waveform, you can put it in this harmonic editor and see exactly how it's constructed. And then we can go to the pulse wave and you, and you can look at it and say, okay, so this is the, the formula of what we know is a pulse wave. 
and this strange wave here we can see oh, okay so it looks like a triangle wave and a square wave a little bit but the phases are a little different so that's kind of how we can understand what the waveforms are and as I mentioned before all this the square wave for example it sounds kind of boxy maybe a little hollow depending on how you want to describe it but it's really made up of all these little types of sine waves because each one of these bars is its own sine wave and then when you add all these together it creates that square wave and I'll turn this down just a little bit and if we play something we can see in our scope here that it makes it look like a square and up here we can see all these different sine waves doing their own job to come up with a entire picture of what a square wave or really any other si wave that's not a sine wave that technically is it's weird but that's basically the concept behind it so as as kind of a recap of that every sound you hear is a multiple of different sine waves at different phases and different pitches so next thing up on the list we're going to kind of dive in to see like what exactly is a harmonic right in the harmonic let's actually for this demonstration let's do the in appreciate again so it makes a little bit more sense so let's go to basic shapes as well we got our sine wave and let's go to edit so these different harmonics right now the first if you notice there's going to be two and then the fourth one and then the eighth one and then the 16th one those are all going to be octaves which you ever see a synthesizer like citrus is what this ratio here means so two and then four is another octave and then eight is the next octave above that and then 16. So it's just a doubling of, of the frequency, which is what an octave is. And that's what that ratio number right here means. In case you wondered and you looked at that and you said, what does this mean? Because it's, it's, it can be misleading a little bit sometimes. So next up on this editor here, with these different types of harmonics, like the first harmonic is obviously going to be an octave because it's a doubling of the first one, the uh, the fundamental. But then the next one, the third harmonic is, is, is gonna be three times the amount of this. So for example, let's say we have a note at 100 Hertz. The next doubling, the next harmonic is going to be an octave because it's 200. But then the next harmonic is gonna be 300 because it's three times the fundamental, which is not the next bar up, which is an octave, which would be four, right? So if you got 100 and you times it by four, it's going to be the uh, second octave or the four, uh, third harmonic. Third harmonic, technically the fourth bin, but as you can see, this, although it's called one, that's generally you're going to be your fundamental, your starting point, and the next one is going to be your first harmonic. So depending on how you want to look at it, I think this graph kind of demonstrates it pretty well. And that's kind of like the, the core concept of building a sound from scratch, right? So when you hear like the organ, you know, like most of the time, like they're just adding up octaves and, you, and that's why it's easy to see like, oh, okay, so here's, here's the light gray, here's another one. You kind of decrease the amplitude a little bit and then play a chord of something. And then you have a, uh, the basis of an organ sound. Then there's also like the turning of things and we'll, we, you can get into different modulations later, but that's the kind of chord point of the, uh, of the harmonic editor and what these bars mean. So it's always kind of interesting, for example, let's go to, let's look, look at this analog sine wave. So it looks like a sine wave, sounds like a sine wave. And if we look at it, it's not exactly perfect. We have all these little types of sine waves at very low amplitudes, even some up here at different waves. So it's not a perfect digital sine wave it's replicating an analog sound which has all these different little uh, sine waves at different uh, different phases so it kind of gives it an analog characteristic field. It's, it's an imperfect sine wave which could make it sound a little bit more realistic which is why it's called uh, the analog sine wave but if we take all these out and take these ones out that would technically be a perfect sine wave right there and it sounds very digital and very clean. So depending on if you want that sound or the analog sound, that's totally up to you. And that's something to kind of play around with a little bit. And you can even make your own types of waveforms. Just kind of draw around a little bit and maybe, you know, change some phases. And then you have something kind of cool like that. Like, okay, I like that sound, you know, and you kind of play around. Let's drop an octave, maybe give it a little bit of unison, detune it. Sounds kind of creepy, right?
and that's just a little bit of messing around making a creepy sound. So I hope that kind of makes sense. If any of this doesn't make sense, please let me know and I'll try my best in the comments to reply and try to demystify it a little bit, but it's generally pretty straightforward as, as long as you keep practicing with it and kind of seeing what everything does and kind of play with the harmonic editor and kind of just come up with your own sounds and, and understand why different sounds sound the way they do, like why, as we look, why the triangle wave is a triangle wave. It's just every odd harmonic, right? And then why is a saw wave a saw wave? It's all the harmonics at slowly decreasing amplitude values. And then you kind of understand that's the scientific part that it can be kind of boring, yes, but as long as you understand it, then it makes it much easier in the future to design a certain sound that you want to hear. So that's basically going to wrap up this video. I try to make it not to make it too long, but in a nutshell, that's what wave shapes are and that's what harmonics are. And again, if there's any questions, please let me know and I'll do my best to help you guys out as much as I can. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next part.